Hey, these two are set up. We're good to go. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take this one down range and, yeah. and get it set up. Yeah, whenever you're ready. But I'll let you know. Yeah! Are you kidding, dude? We just got these targets. Uh. Man. Hey, hey, hey! We need to keep them fresh. We need them fresh. Are you Are you serious? What is wrong with you? Are you serious right now? Hey. What? What are, what are we accomplishing right now? What, what, what did this accomplish? What, what's the point of this? What's the name of the video? Steel targets suck? Y yeah. I didn't say we need dirty targets for the video. We I thought we wanted to show how bad they suck. Yeah, what, what, what is that, that going to do? Break them? Well, no. It's not going <laughs> to break them. Yeah, I know. But you're telling me that we needed this. Yeah. So you wanted this for the video. Yeah, uh, in, in good condition, preferably. So that brand new target you didn't want in this condition. Yeah, I, I want it clean. Gosh, you got to start communicating better, man. Steel targets suck. You need to leave. I know, that might sound weird coming from a guy who owns a steel target manufacturing company. But hear me out, because this video is important. This video is going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of steel targets. We're going to boil this down in an extremely simple way. And we are going to show you that sometimes, and this is a fact, sometimes it would be better for you to train with something like a USPSA cardboard target. Before I talk about the negative sides of steel, let me talk about the strengths. For example, our mini ADAP target that I have to the right here. This is an extremely audible target and it's a very small target. What those two things mean is the audibility is letting you know immediately when you get a hit. And the size aspect is holding us to a higher level of accountability. So when we look at that compared to myself, this is really about a third or 20, maybe 30% the size or 60%, whatever you wanna say. It's about the size of a center mass hit. And when we look at a USPSA target, the mini ADAP target is very similar to that A zone. So we're holding ourselves to a high level of accountability. The other aspect of the steel targets is they don't produce a lot of waste during their lifetime. So we're not throwing away paper, we're not burning paper, we don't have a consumable product unless you are an ultra high, high volume range. Some of the products that we sell might end up being consumable over time. But ultimately, the steel targets have a strength in the efficiency department in the fact that you can set them up and forget about them and just continue training. And that subconscious audibility, that immediate reaction of a bullet hitting that steel, there's really nothing that can compare to that confirmation of a hit like shooting steel targets. Now, the one area where a paper target can come close is when we're shooting at close distance, and I'm gonna do a demo downrange over here showing you that, where you can actually see your hits, but steel targets, for as long as you can hear them, will give you that immediate confirmation of hit. And if you don't hear that, you know that you've missed. And you see that in like milliseconds, as fast as your brain can process, boom. You know whether or not you've hit or whether or not you've missed. But that comes at a cost in certain situations. So let's walk down range, I wanna show you this. Right here at about seven yards, I have two C zones, and I also have two USPSA cardboard targets. Now the C zones are a fairly large steel target, and in this particular role, I would actually say this is the wrong setting to use a target system like this. So let me go grab my ear pro. Okay, so now that I have my ear pro, we can actually get into the shooting demo. And situations like that make Brenton's job harder for him because he now has to make a fancy little cut, sprinkle some magical stuff in there to make this video make sense. But downrange, we've got those two C zones. And what I'm gonna do is draw on the timer, engage three rounds into the left C zone transition, put three rounds into the right C zone. I'm gonna do the same thing with the USPSA target. Then we're gonna go down and look at it and kind of dissect where I'm going with this video. So on the beat. Okay, that was a 3.13. I did have one miss on the left there, which is sort of embarrassing because it's a season, but I digress. So going back to the strengths of steel, I knew right away that I had a miss on that season. So now let's do this on cardboard. All right, 
let's go down range. So that was a 3.02. I'm showing you guys. On the left target here, I can tell with certainty that I had a C zone hit. And then I got two alphas. On the left C zone, where'd I hit? Just take a guess. It's been shot a couple times, but okay. Joking aside, you guys are seeing that the downside is I knew I hit, but I don't know where I hit on this C zone. Let's go check this other USPSA target. We've got three alphas right here. Same thing on this old clapped out prototype C zone from back in the day. Where did I hit? Now that's the downside of these steel targets in this arena. I don't know exactly where I hit. And because of the size of the C zone, I can only assume that I've hit within the realm of a C zone. And in many situations, I wouldn't find focusing in on that big of a target as acceptable. Now, as we walk back over here, I wanna kinda of round out this video because obviously up here, I showed you a bit of a different style of steel target. We talked about our mini ADAP system and the mini ADAP system is extremely small. So I know some of you right now are saying, well, couldn't I just run a smaller steel target at this distance? And the answer is yes, you could. And in many situations, the smaller size is going to help you out and it can be a strength. You're gonna get that immediate feedback like we saw with the C zones, but you're gonna hold yourself to a higher accountability level. And that's why we talk so much about the mini ADAP because it sort of blends the world of steel targets and paper targets. But at the end of the day, if you've put a bunch of rounds on this and it's not brand new paint, you're not gonna know exactly where you're hitting. And in many situations, in many drills, we wanna be able to dissect our data and be able to tell with a trackable metric, where are we hitting? Steel targets sometimes will be the answer, but sometimes shooting something like a USPSA target might be a better move. Now, the last little caveat that I'm gonna point out to you guys is the fact that one way you can combat this, if all you have is steel targets, you can use spray paint every time you're running a drill and you can touch up the face of the target. And what that's going to do is essentially give you a clean surface where you can tell exactly where you're hitting. So the long and short of this guys is there's not a better one when we're talking about steel versus paper. In fact, it's not a versus at all. This is a combination of tools that you should be using in tandem and you should be selecting one or the other in different scenarios. And that scenario and what your objective is in your training is what is going to dictate which one makes the most sense for you. And the cool thing is to us, it's not a competition. We have bases that work with both paper and steel. We've got steel targets of various sizes and we have steel targets that allow you to shoot closer than any other targets on the market. We are offering paper targets as well. So we really have the entire scope of training covered and we do that intentionally. So guys, our objective is to see you training well and becoming a better asset to your friends, your family, and your community using quality steel targets like our ADAP system or targets like our USPSA targets that we manufacture for all of your training is the way that you can do that. So check out our website, consider purchasing something there. Like, subscribe, share this video with somebody who you think would need it. Catch you in the next one. I'm gonna see if it will break that rock, I think. It's a mini vital. I think it'll do the overhead slam. It did. It freaking broke it. Yes. TA targets, stronger than sandstone.